Organized fire protection was started in Larchmont in 1889 by a group of 25 citizens led by Charles Singer of Singer Sewing Machine family and Singer uh, Palmer Singer Auto Car Company, who was elected the first chief. Hose, reel, and rudimentary equipment were kept in a shed on Ocean Avenue and they called themselves the Larchmont Manor Fire Company, of which Hose Company No. 1 was its prime unit. In the spring of 1891, a firehouse 28 feet wide by 50 feet deep with a bell in the cupola was erected on the corner of Circle and Maple Avenues. All the hand-drawn equipment was placed in the firehouse and training programs and drills were started. In 1891, the village was incorporated and all the equipment therein and the department was organized under village law with an engine company, hook and ladder company, and hose company. The Larchmont Fire Department was therefore incorporated with Charles E. Little as the first chief. Hand-drawn equipment was adapted to be horse-drawn and sometimes would be hooked on the back of the trolley. In 1896, the village obtained its first steam pumping engine, which was assigned to the engine company. A year later, the hose company secured a hose wagon with 700 feet of hose to support the steamer. In 1923, the village opened a new municipal hall, which included new company space for the fire department. The hook and ladder company drew room number one, the hose company received the number two room, and the engine company was awarded the number three room. Fire Department in 1971-72. What we're going to do this evening is we're going to try to preserve a little of the history of the company rooms upstairs. The building within the next few weeks is getting ready to have bids open to do renovations to accommodate the Americans with Disabilities Act and also to make further room for the village offices. In doing that, the volunteer companies will be giving up their rooms and before that happens we would like to preserve a little of what's in those rooms. A little history as to those, the way those rooms formed. The, the companies moved up to the rooms in 1923, 75 years ago when the uh, building was completed. The companies came from three different locations. The edge company came from a firehouse on Chatsworth Avenue which is just about across the street from where the post office stands today. The hose and the hook and ladder companies came from a, the main fire station, which was on the corner of Cedar and, uh, excuse me, Circle and Maple Avenue. There's an English Tudor house right there. And the fourth company, the Ambulance Protective Corps, they used to meet in individual members' homes and they eventually got a room upstairs. The patrol company wasn't formed until two years after they arrived at the building. So what Ned and I are going to do, and uh, I'll introduce Ned, and Ned is right now, he's the fire commissioner of the village of Larchmont, and he's a member of the engine company, and he's also very interested in preserving his history. Uh, we hope to preserve this because uh, the rooms will never be like they are now, and uh, there's quite a bit of nostalgia, as we'll sh soonly see, and as the companies, uh, I'll give you a brief history of the companies and how they took over those rooms, and the renovations that were made over the course of years. So I think we should go upstairs and go ahead and then take a look and explain what the rooms are all about. Welcome to the ladder room. The hook and ladder company uh, 
received this room in 1923 as a result of a drawing. When the three companies moved to this building onto this floor, they had a lottery, and uh, the winner of the lottery got to select whatever room they wanted. The Hook and Ladder Company selected this room. The Hook and Ladder Company, as was formed at the beginning of the department in 1891, was basically formed to ladder structures, to ventilate buildings so that the interior firefighters could have better access to the building, to uh, uh, make it as, as smoke-free and as ventilation-free as possible. They also do the rescue, and uh, these traditions and duties continue to this day. Uh, when the companies moved up here, the rooms were given to the companies for multi-purposes. They were given to them for off hours entertainment and recreation, also to be used to uh, uh, have their uh, monthly meetings and uh, training sessions, and uh, uh, also, as I said, to have their libations after their drills and meetings and uh, just a place for the, the men to get together and enjoy themselves and enjoy their conversations. Uh, this bar that I'm standing behind was uh, erected in the uh, late 50s. Uh, as a, a young boy, I used to receive $5 a meeting for cleaning up this room, and the, the bar used to be a little corner bar right over there on the opposite side, and uh, I used to get $5 after each company drill, each company meeting, and uh, department drill to uh, clean up the room and wash the glasses and mop the floor and uh, put all the chairs back and empty the ashtrays, of which is not a problem nowadays, but I remember my early years in the fire company, you opened the door here and uh, you never saw such a blue haze in all your life of, of cigarette smoke, and that was pre-air conditioning days, but the rooms were given for these members to, to entertain. Uh, and uh, they would have their annual parties and, and uh, collations up here. As you've seen also, there are many mementos and memorandums that are collected by the various companies. Of course, you can see beer mugs from the various conventions and uh, meetings. There's uh, shoulder patches from various fire departments. There's the old license plates that's issued to us by the county to designate our equipment. One was uh, the old Ladder 18, and then the new one is Tower Ladder 7, which it is many softball trophies. This company had a reputation of having a very good softball team throughout the, the department. And this is actually the bell off the old tower ladder that uh, was retired uh, two years ago and it is now serving duty in the Harrisburg, Pennsylvania Fire Department. But that's the bell off of it. A couple speaking trumpets that were used by the officers to uh, the mainly ceremonial trumpets. and. Uh, this fire hydrant, I mean, excuse me, fire extinguisher lamp that was given to the company by XG John Giroli. This picture, I think, is a picture that everybody loves. Uh, the fire pole in the firehouse is no longer used, mainly for safety. Larchmont, we have one here downstairs, but it's no longer used. But it shows a very dramatic picture of men responding to an alarm, and I, th I think it is one of the, the, the nicer, plain, succinct pictures showing firemen responding to an alarm. The slog picture uh, was created by one of the company members who was a photographer. Actually, there was a, they were taken in groups of four or five men, and they were cut out. And as you can see, that fire truck appears to be 500 feet long. Uh, it's the old city service 1928 truck that they had. And this picture was taken the year that they received the new hook and ladder truck, which was 1950. Uh, the picture is very exaggerated. It was taken down in the Flint Park parking lot, and uh, this apparatus was uh, retired shortly thereafter. But uh, the photographer used a little license in, in, in showing these pictures, but he tended to place it pretty well together and even created shadows. The, the picture was weren't taken all the same day. And uh, I think he did a pretty good job, and it's one of the most honored pictures that the Hook and Ladder Company has. This cartoon, basically with the Hook and Ladder logo and, and the three f firemen carrying a ladder, was done by Herb Roth, who was a commercial artist and cartoonist who belonged to the, the Hook and Ladder Company in the uh, early 30s and early 40s. He was the most prolific, prolific uh, cartoonist, and. Uh, had several uh, cartoons running in the major newspapers.
the upper top of the picture of the mural which was done in the late 50s by a local artist, Mimi Genoine. Uh, the upper, the, this whole collage, I'll try to explain it to you. The upper picture, of course, is the Circle Avenue Firehouse with the bell tower alongside of it. The steamer was their three-horse steamer which came out of that firehouse, and that was the largest steamer that the fire department had. The boat represents the boat ride picnics in the summertime, and the men playing softball on the beach were part of that boat ride picnic. The, the lady doing the dance in the Indian costume is a person that many of you have seen for the last nine years on television. She's Seinfeld's mother. Her name was Dee Sheridan, and she is the woman who played Seinfeld's mother for the last year, last nine years on TV. Of course, the gentlemen are standing around the, the, the bar having some talks. Uh, the card games were uh, an occurrence. Every, every night after meetings were over, uh, the, the card table, the top would come off and the men would play cards. The bottom shows the 1938 Aaron's uh, Fox Pumper. That was the one that they had and the men responding to it. The gentleman in the picture, his name was Robert Greeson. He was captain of the hose company uh, when that was uh, taken or uh, drawn. And his two sons later became firemen. One became a, 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 in the hose company. One became a professional fireman in the city of New Rochelle. And the other one uh, advanced as high as second deputy chief in the Larson Fire Department. But he had to drop out because of personal illness and uh, business commitments. But uh, his, uh, his sons were very active. Of course, uh, there were several large drills in which railroad ties were put up, and we had uh, drills with the town of Marinick Fire Department up in the old uh, railroad station parking lot, and that's what this big flame area represents. The building down here represents the old Nourishell Fire Department drill tower, and uh, it, the host company used to go down and practice with that. Uh, this is, the picture was restored uh, and uh, retouched up and uh, re-highlighted uh, about four or five years ago when the host company had the room done over. But it's uh, one of the, the more priceless things in the Lockwell Fire Department. This bar that I'm standing behind, hopefully, uh, will be used in the new quarters of the volunteer firemen up on the third floor. Again, I told you, next door in the hook and ladder room, as a boy, I used to clean the room after meetings. I used to do the same in this room. I used to get $5 for cleaning after each meeting. But in those days, there was a little corner bar at that end of the room. However, uh, when the room was redecorated, I guess five or six years ago, uh, a beautiful job was done with this uh, wood pan. Uh, it's not panning, it's raw wood. And uh, the, uh, the shelving to hold all the trophies. Of course, we have the speaking trumpets, which uh, every company has. They were synonymous with fire company officers, so they could speak out their commands. We have the beer signs, the inevitable beer signs from uh, various uh, uh, conventions and, and uh, the like, and I know also uh, the autographed softballs, because as I spoke in the Hogan Ladder Room, uh, the companies have an intercompany rivalry uh, once a year where they play softball, and uh, there's a little bit of competition to, to stare interest. Again, as in the uh, Hogan Ladder Room, this is the license plate from the, uh, the, the, the pumper, and this is the th engine 35, and 60 is the designation for the Larson Fire Department. These were trophies of the tournaments between the various fire companies and uh, also up on top are trophies of the like. There you see an old leather hose company helmet with a torch on the top. The large one hose company is noted throughout the whole eastern seaboard at their parades. They make, make a great hit at a night parade when all the firemen are marching with their torches on their heads. And uh, it is a very spectacular sight with the torches on their heads and the red red uniform tops and the white pants, and uh, that's been a tradition of the hose company from their inception, and uh, uh, they've been known for that. Well, we're in the 
engine company room now, and uh, this is Ned's and my company room. I've been coming up to this room since, I guess, for the last 60 years as a boy, uh, as a young teenager, and then when I was 18, I joined this room and came up through the officer ranks. So there are a lot of memories in this room. My dad sat in this room. My son, who was a professional firefighter and lieutenant downstairs, uh, was a company officer in this room. His explorers, scouts met in this room. The formation of the Larch One Temple before the building was built on Larch One and Willow. The building committee used to meet in this room all the time. That's something that many people don't know. Also, the other rooms were always used uh, as the village could use them. I mean, uh, this room used to take the overflow when the visiting nurse was across the hall and uh, the children used to come in here or the village office staff people would come in and have their lunch, or Carmen DeLuca would bring in the state auditors and they would be in this room. In the hook and ladder room, the post office uh, uh, union met there. And uh, so the rooms weren't just used by the fire companies. Uh, basically, people who wanted to use the rooms, if they asked the companies and there was no conflicts, they, the rooms were, were put to good use by other organizations. Again, as in the other companies, they're, all, they're very proud of their athletic abilities and also trophies that were won at various parades. Most of these uh, for best appearing company and, and apparatus. As you can see, the, uh, the mugs and the trophies and uh, actually all of the, the pewter trophies have individual members' names on them and uh, uh, they would uh, use these trophies for uh, uh, naturally whatever you put in them. The picture uh, that you're looking at now was uh, William Collins, who was the founder of Collins Brothers Movers. Uh, actually, he passed the business on to his sons, uh, you, who was an ex-chief out of this company, and William, who was an ex-chief. But that is the original Mr. Bill Collins, who was uh, a captain. Actually, they didn't call him captain in those days. He was foreman of the engine company. The bottom pictures of, of the men in uniform are the engine company received regulation uniforms in 1946. This was their first picture in regulation uniform. These were the ex-chiefs and officers of the engine company. And of course, down below, this was the whole company. This was taken Memorial Day, 1946. So that picture is now 52 years old. And this one down below? The picture down below is the whole company, uh, and in those days they were 50-man companies. I mean, again, as I said before, meeting nights, these rooms were so crowded you couldn't get a seat. You had to stand sometimes. And uh, that was in the, the first regulation uniforms that Larchman Fire Department uh, had. Most of the uniforms were parade uniforms with a shirt and a blouse and uh, a big bow tie. And these were the first regulation uniforms in Larchman Fire Department. This picture was taken actually when I was chief, and uh, you can see me in the middle of the picture standing with the white hat. It was the, uh, this collage of pictures represents our centennial year in uh, 1991. Uh, this was the menu uh, we shared a dinner with the Hook and Ladder Company. Of course, uh, starting up in the upper left-hand corner, uh, these were people uh, taken uh, family and friends in the engine company during that centennial year at various events and, uh, and parties. That's from fire department. The young fellow in the military uniform on the lower right was, that picture was taken uh, while he was in Operation Desert Storm. He was one of the members of the department that went away to uh, uh, Africa during the Desert Storm. This cartoon represents, I uh, guess, basically as it is. Uh, a fellow by the name of uh, Sachs, uh, Gene Sachs, and he was a commercial cartoonist, and he wrote a cartoon called Sad Sack that was in all the uh, military papers and all the papers uh, depicting uh, uh, soldiers' problems. And uh, this was a picture that he gave and signed and gave to the engine company upon his going into the Navy during World War II. And uh, he, uh, there are a couple other cartoons on the wall uh, showing uh, his comic strips. Uh, this is a plaque uh, given to ex-chief Hugh Collins. He was the first, he was the son of uh, Captain William Collins, who you saw uh, previously. He was the first member of the Larchmont Fire Department ever to achieve 50 years of active service. The black and white picture is, is 
Hubs Collins or Hugh Collins at his dinner uh, the day he received that plaque. It's okay. Thing. This plaque is uh, dedicated to uh, ex-chief Hugh Collins. It's called Bub's Corner. This is where he always sat during the company meetings. And uh, as a young member, uh, when you joined the company, you didn't have a right to speak to anybody. It was like Congress. You didn't speak to anybody until about two or three years. Uh, but you respected the older members. But because Bub sat here, this corner was given to him in his name after he passed away. The bell that you see actually is a ceremonial bell with the captain's shield on it that we use during uh, communion breakfasts and, and meetings. And uh, they're told for the uh, honored uh, members who passed away. This plaque is uh, to ex-chief Duncan Scotty McPhail who was the second member of the department to achieve over 50 years of active service. Unfortunately, uh, right after this was presented to uh, Scotty, he took seriously ill and he was not able to take part in any uh, dinner or uh, honoring uh, of him because of his illness. Go. This is a picture of the engine company room back in the very early 30s. As you can see, the walls were plain plaster, and uh, they're not knotty pine as they are now. And the, and the walls were plain with, with fancy uh, plaster panels, but uh, uh, there wasn't the adornment and the pictures on the walls in, in those days. Uh, but this showed the men. This was taken after a fire inspection dinner uh, or prior to one. And you can see the uniforms, white pants, blue shirt, white bow tie, and a helmet. That's and the old chief's uniform wore choker collars and uh, uh, about 12 buttons uh, on the front. This picture is a picture taken in 1941 at the 50th anniversary of the Larchman Fire Department. Uh, that's the fire department standing on review in front of the building and the big white screen on the building is uh, a movie screen uh, and uh, pictures, moving pictures were shown from the library across. Uh, as you can see, this was taken in October. The weather was cold, people had coats on, but this was just, this was in October of 1941. And uh, as you can see the flags and the regalia, this was the, the celebration of the department's 50th anniversary. cabinet represents again many trophies and the like. The, uh, starting at the top left on the shelf is you'll see a 76. 76 is an engine company in New York City of which we used to go down into their quarters and train. And uh, that's a face shield from that company. The top is an old engine company helmet which dates back to the early 1900s. And of course the face shield alongside of it uh, is one of the early department face shields. The belt on the second shelf is actually the uniform belt uh, that they wore with the white pants. They were, that's mainly for parades. Uh, on, the, on the middle shelf, of course, was a little engine that was one of the members had made. But interesting enough, the lantern in the back of the shelf with the face shield on it was actually uh, one of the lanterns on the old patrol truck. And then the bottom shelf has uh, Badges from various country fire departments, Bermuda, and where local, where our members had visited on vacation, they received badges from those fire departments. This wall represents the white chief's helmet. It's uh, the helmet that was worn by one of the first deputy chiefs back in the 30s. And uh, upon his passing, when his family was cleaning out the attic, it was found there. The two plaques with all the uh, nameplates on them are very synonymous with the engine company, and they are plaques of pride for the engine company. Uh, the engine company yearly gives uh, an engineman of the year award 
one of the most proudest things is that one year I received it, and then the next year my son received it, and he, he and I are right alongside of each other, and that's one of the prouder things of my life. Uh, the picture up above is the wet down presentation of the present uh, Pierce pumper that we have downstairs that was dedicated in 1992. And that was the company uh, in 1992 when we received the present uh, pumper. This plaque depicts all the ex-captains and chiefs of the engine company. The red ones are chiefs who were former captains and the blue ones are uh, former captains, the date of service and their names. Uh, the engine company has been known as the company of chiefs. Uh, the engine company has had more chiefs for the Larchmont Fire Department, and which has always given me the feeling that not that we were better than the other companies, but just that the dedication of the men and their perseverance led them to become chiefs of the fire department. And this is something I'm also very proud of. The plates were given out during the 75th anniversary and they were commemorative plates given to all the people who came to the, uh, the dinner. And uh, the pumper in it is the 1947 American La France pumper uh, that we had up until 1972 when we got the uh, American La France pumper. Again, above it is an old engine company hat and you can helmet it and you can see the age of it, how it has worn out like all of us. As shown in Ned's panning around the room, uh, you notice a, a, a beautiful pine uh, wall covering, and uh, that was installed in 1938 over the original plaster, and, uh, plaster walls, and uh, that's not paneling, so to speak, that you would buy today in your local home depot. That is actually coming through knotty pine paneling, I mean, uh, board. And uh, as a younger member, I remember many uh, a time having to scrub and put a shine on it. Unfortunately, uh, with the passing of this room and uh, uh, its future use, uh, hopefully maybe we can save a little of this paneling uh, to uh, install in, a, in an area of uh, uh, our new quarters, just as a reminder and a memory of uh, what was here. We've been up here for 75 years, and a lot of memories are going to be going away with our moving upstairs, and that's why Ned and I are trying to preserve these for you. I'm seated now at the uh, captain and meeting table up upstairs on the third floor of the patrol company room. Unfortunately, uh, in preparation for the construction and the work to be done, the patrol company has removed almost all their memorabilia and pictures off the wall. But however, I can give you a little idea of what uh, the outcome and uh, what happened. Uh, the patrol company was formed about two years after the uh, other companies moved into the building. And so they were located up here into the third floor. The patrol company's duties were basically they took over the duties, uh, a lot of duties of the Ambulance Protective Corps. They would uh, uh, do traffic duties at fires. Uh, they carried all the horses and the lighting and uh, uh, provided extra lighting at the fire. And also they would uh, cover up the uh, contents of a building while the firefighters were putting the fire out. Their duties have since changed and uh, they formed themselves in later years into a rescue company. However, uh, in today's operations, their members are working along with the other companies basically as a, a one company fire department and uh, their men are also trained in uh, basic firefighting and the like. This portion of the room was the original portion of the room and uh, in days prior to air conditioning, summer meetings <laughs> used to be very, very hot up here. My uh, father-in-law was a member of this company and he was a, a, uh, an officer in this company. Uh, that the picture up there was done by the same gentleman that did the picture of the old uh, 
uh, steamer downstairs. It depicts a patrolman and actually was modeled after a gentleman by the name of uh, uh, Joe Garrity, who was a captain, uh, a later captain of the patrol company, uh, standing with the lantern that you saw the same thing down the engine room. And that in the background was the old Seagrave 1928 uh, patrol truck. And uh, uh, basically that was uh, the duties of the patrolman uh, at a working fire to keep cars and traffic away from the fire scene so that the firefighters could, could work in, in safety. Uh, again, unfortunately, most of the materials are being put away by the various companies uh, to protect them during the course of construction. This room will be the actual room where all three combined companies will meet. Uh, I think Ned will show on the future drawings the, uh, uh, the plans of how this room is going to look after the construction. Uh, this eave or nave uh, is a portion that sticks out uh, over the front of the building and, the, and there's smaller windows and architecturally it's very beautiful. Uh, this is going to be part of the, uh, uh, actually where we're sitting now, uh, will be part of the, uh, the future fire council room which will be used as a fire council room and meeting room. Uh, that portion of it, I don't remember, Ned, is going to be used for what, storage or? Uh, I can't remember because that whole wall uh, will be a corridor. Uh, the facing wall on the front of the building uh, will be a fate, uh, will be a corridor to gain access to this end of the building and to where the elevator is going to be installed. And behind us will be the locker rooms for the police, uh, and also uh, there will be uh, uh, toilet facilities and shower facilities for the police and for the firemen to use. Again, I'm at the uh, patrol company's uh, bar, of course, all firefighters have libation after drills and meetings, and of course, uh, for the social functions that the companies hold. Uh, the, this room, uh, the members just kept encroaching and encroaching uh, uh, about 12 feet in front of me of where the uh, pool table is now was actually where the, the end of the pool table is actually where the end of the room ended and being there was vacant space in the attic uh, naturally as the, as the company got larger the patrol company originally only had 30 members and later on in the uh, 50s uh, they were given the charter to increase their membership uh, to 50 members so uh, uh, they needed the room for these members so they moved the bar back and they moved back into actually what was attic storage space and all this work was done by themselves uh, uh, the, the paneling and uh, uh, the floor tiles and, and, and the erection of the bar and uh, again unfortunately uh, most of the mementos in fact all of them have been packed away for storage and uh, some of them will come back and uh, provisions will be made in the uh, uh, future construction to uh, to show these mementos and uh, souvenirs and uh, uh, items of uh, memory to all of us. Change is constant in the fire service. In Larchmont Village, change in the fire service has historically responded to changes in the methods and technologies of fire protection and to change in the needs of our village. In 1889, the citizens who formed the Larchmont Manor Fire Company responded to the needs of a newly developing community. In 1891, when Larchmont incorporated as a village, the community responded with new structures, new equipment, and formed the Larchmont Fire Department. In 1923, the village saw the need for a municipal building and included the fire department and the, the fire companies in what we know today as Village Hall. In recent decades, the fire department and the village government have continued to respond to changing needs and methods of fire protection, providing improved emergency medical services, advanced approaches to the initial attack of fires, 
and coordinated approaches to training. It is in this spirit that the fire department and the village government approach the upgrade of Village Hall for the next century of service. The entire village will benefit from improved spaces to support village services. The fire department's new company rooms in the third floor of Village Hall will provide larger spaces for department training, governance, and social functions. And we are committed to the goal that the larger combined company rooms will continue in the tradition of the company rooms featured in this film while the rooms will be new and different. They will continue to reflect the vision and history of the fire department as depicted in the pictures, memorabilia, and historical decorations featured in this film.